Hello, welcome to another episode of the OData screencast series. My name is Giorgio Balashi, and in this episode I'm going to show you how you can access an OData data feed directly from a web page. So we will create a static HTML page and we will use JavaScript to render a server published OData feed on this static HTML page. The feed is the one we created in the previous episodes, so it publishes the products and the categories from Northwind database. Let me just show you the structure of the products entities by selecting a single product from the feed. We have two important properties we would like to display on our static page. It's called the product name and the other property is the units in stock. We would like to create an unordered list that displays the product name and the units in stock properties. To make our life a bit simpler, we will utilize the jQuery library and the jQuery templates plugin. This plugin is created by Microsoft. Currently, it is in beta 1 version, but it will be sooner or later part of the jQuery core library. So it seems to be a wonderful choice. I have already downloaded these two JavaScript files placed on my clipboard. So let me just paste it into my solution. Let me just add a new item to this solution, a static HTML page, and call it index.htm. To use the jQuery template plugin, let me create an unordered list that will serve as a placeholder for, um, for our items. Let me just call it the item parent. The next step is to create, to define the item template that will be rendered into this unordered list. This item template will reside in a script block with a special type, which is not text slash JavaScript or set text slash script or anything like that. Its type is text slash x dash jQuery dash tmpl. This type is not recognized by the browser. The browser will ignore it, but um, the jQuery template plugin will be able to access it. Let me add an ID to it. We will call it item template. The template will contain a single list item, and the list item will have placeholders to render the two properties we are interested in. So the product name and the units in stock. Units in stock. So these are the two properties that are displayed on the page. Let me just drag and drop the two JavaScript libraries into the source code. And let's just create a function that will be called when the page is fully loaded into the browser into the browser. So this is Dora function of jQuery and within the Dora function let's just download the OData feed from the server using Ajax. So uh, here we have a jQuery Ajax snippet and uh, let's just customize it. The first important property is the URL. We have to point to the OData feed and we have to specify that we would like to download the product entities. The next important uh, setting is that we would like to download a JSON data type. Setting this property results in an accept header that is added to the HTTP request by jQuery and when the server recognizes uh, this accept header, accept equals JSON, then the server will not produce an XML response. Instead, it will generate a JSON response that we can um, process in uh, JavaScript. So here is our success function that will be called by jQuery library when the Ajax call uh, returns. So let's just write a single line of code that will generate a template that will render the data. So first let's select the item template and use it as an item template and render the D property of the response into this template. The D property is a specialty from, uh, from the OData service. It will contain all the data. Um, so we have to select it. 
and the result should be appended to the item parent which is uh, our template placeholder. So let's save all the code and let's try it viewing browser. It does not render, so let's go back and fix the code. If you have a typo in the URL, you have to be prepared that it will not render. So let's correct the typo, go back to the browser, refresh it, and it still does not. Let's review the code again. Oh, it seems that um, Visual Studio um, inserted jQuery and the jQuery templates library in wrong order. So let's just fix it, save it, and try again. Refresh it, and here we have all products in the order that the server published the feed. Uh, the benefits of this solution is that uh, you can just modify the result just by changing a single string, the URL, on the client. So let's switch back to Visual Studio, let's find the URL and append an order by token here to render the result in uh, alphabetical order. So let's just order by product name, save, back, refresh, and now it's ordered alphabetically by product name. What's more, you can filter the results. So, for example, if you would like to display only those records that have uh, more than 50 items, items on stock, so uh, then you can just add a filter token here to the URL. So let's just filter to units in stock greater than 50. Save, go back, refresh, and here you have only those products that have more than 50 items in stock ordered alphabetically. That's a very nice feature of jQuery and the client-side rendering that you have to modify only a single line of string to filter, to order, and to, to query any data you would like to. However, the solution is absolutely not perfect. It works within a single site However, if you would like to access data from one side that resides on another site, then uh, you will hit into the same origin policy in the browser. How you can solve the problem, I will show you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time.